keynote, Abubakar Nur Khalil, who is going to tell us about VC, uh, the VC ecosystem in Africa. Abubakar? My name is Abubakar Nur Khalil. I run a Bitcoin VC called Recursive Capital, where we invest in Bitcoin companies in Africa mainly, as well as sitting on the board of B Trust, where we basically give developer education through a program called B Trust Builders, as well as provide funding to the open source ecosystem in Africa. In general, I'd like to say my hope at the end of this talk is that people have a better understanding about what exactly the Bitcoin VC space is like in terms of a landscape in Africa, how we got to where we are right now, kind of the evolution, some of the catalysts, some of the issues we've had over time, and how everything has developed to a point where we have a fledging ecosystem, and obviously some of the pain points as well as what to be optimistic about. And naturally, the way we have to look at this is to take a step back in time and look into really, we can't say a fixed date, but let's just say for all intents and purposes, 2018 was around when this ecosystem started. And at that point, it wasn't necessarily a case where we had a definition for Bitcoin companies or even any definition for a lot of these emerging or frontier technologies. Really at the time, what was happening was we started seeing a lot of companies that were operating as Web3 or crypto. And typically, they took the fashion of being exchanges and things of the sort. And the majority of the time, really, they were essentially kind of hustling VCs. And I mean, the VCs were also in on it in the sense that not a lot of people had a good grasp, whether on the technical side, as well as just in general about what is being catalyzed or the kind of development that's moving forward. So a lot of the investments early on at that period were a lot of Bitcoin exchanges, or at least exchanges that had the majority of their volumes in Bitcoin. And we started to see a kind of shift. And at that point, these were kind of the baby steps, I'd say. And this started resulting in, again, because a lot of these companies are essentially the same thing, we started seeing that there wasn't exactly any sort of sustained growth in the manner of either volumes or user acquisition. So we started seeing a shift in terms of the narrative, both from the VC side as well as the companies. We started seeing them position themselves as Web3. So we started seeing protocol startups, which really was just you know code on someone else's laptop or things like that. And a lot of the VCs caught on early in terms of kind of the apprehension. So it seemed like it was a rat race where a lot of people were trying to build something that they felt had some sort of value, but at the end of the day, wasn't going to scale, really had no business case or any sort of value. And we saw some sort of crystallization of exactly what crypto is in the sense that a lot of people just felt it just had to do with at least tokens or Bitcoin or things like that. But at the same time, in general, I'd say the transition between having those companies to defining companies as Bitcoin companies took quite a crazy, I guess, a crazy set of turns really over the years. So you can kind of think of it as the first wave, again, like I said, where they were just purely exchanges, all the way up to the point where we started having some companies understand that the majority of the value that's going to accrue in the future has to be in something that's stable from a technological standpoint. And they settled on Bitcoin. So fast forward to a time like 2019 or so, we started seeing the first set of Bitcoin companies. This was in the form of Bitnob, as well as a couple of others. And really with Bitnob, they did provide a tremendous amount of innovation in the space in the form of integrating Lightning as the first company to do so. And that brought about a lot of changes in the space. So you fast forward to 2021, we started seeing initial capital coming in. And at that point, that was when we had the first launch of the first Bitcoin VC, which is recursive capital. So we started seeing a lot more influx in both foreign and local capital coming into Bitcoin companies. And at this point, it's probably good to kind of give you where the definitions are at in terms of what a Bitcoin company is. And simply, this is just a company that's building on top of the Bitcoin protocol and whose business model is tied to kind of the, the value that could be accrued into Bitcoin itself. So you reach a stage where you have foreign investors coming in, specifically with the appetite of trying to gain access or exposure to some of this rise in the Bitcoin space. And in general, we've seen some of that growth be kind of, I guess, catalyzed even more by some of the development efforts in terms of teaching developers from whether it's Gala, B Trust, and things like that. And that had a mindset shift because we went to a point where everyone had already raised crazy valuations, they went bust, and the appetite was, okay, guys, there isn't exactly a lot of value in this space. What are we creating? Who are we creating it for? So the narrative had to shift into building for Africa, which is why you started seeing innovation around Machu and Kura with USSD codes and kind of having a mental framing around 
the value proposition is really to try and cater for the problems that Bitcoin solves, which is uniquely in the African continent. Now, in general, we're at a point where we have a fully fledging ecosystem with a variety of companies. So there's no longer exchanges. We have companies operating the Bitcoin mining space where at this point, Africa holds around a percent of global hash rate all the way up to the Lightning Network having a lot more growth with over 60 nodes and more than $500,000 in channel capacity. But at the same time, we're still not there yet. There's still a long way to go. And we've seen, at least in the last couple of years, or I'd say maybe the last 18 months, a lack of clear understanding of the difficult, the difficult I say the, the disparity between capital markets in Africa in general versus the rest of the world. There seems to still be a bit of confusion on the entrepreneurial side as well as the VC side in terms of how capital or the capital capacity we have on the continent. Because if you look at obviously the GDP of a place like California versus the entirety of Africa, California's GDP is a lot larger than that. And that also plays into kind of the amount of capacity that some of these companies have. So for example, take early stage companies. They tend to invest, so they tend to raise a tremendous amount of capital. And the thing that isn't exactly clear to them is VC funding is a loan at the end of the day. So it's not a case where it's free capital. So they take on this capital, they spend their time doing hiring because again, that's what growth is to a lot of VCs. And then all that time that could have been spent building an actual product that has actual value that will provide an actual investment case is spent doing other things. So at a stage where we still have some of that happening as well as some of the quote unquote folks that are investing in the Bitcoin space still don't have a clear view of exactly where the opportunities are. But it's not all bleak. At the end of the day, oh fuck. <laughs> it's not all bleak. At the end of the day, we still have a crazy amount, in a good way, of developers coming out who are thinking in a dynamic way, in a very, very refreshing way, in the sense that they're trying to actually build actual businesses that will be able to cater to the African continent. So I think if there's anything you could take away in terms of the future or where this is going, we're at a stage where one, we have a clear definition of exactly what a Bitcoin company is. Two, we have an increasing amount year on year in terms of capital that's coming into this ecosystem. And lastly, we have the youngest continent in the world. So we're gonna be cracking at this for quite a while. And I think we're gonna see general VC landscapes all across the world kind of replicate both the development that's gonna happen in Africa as well as look onto Africa to kind of understand exactly where the market is. So the future is incredible, is, is fresh, is amazing, is dynamic. It's filled with a lot of crazy, interesting entrepreneurs that are building at the very frontiers all the way from mining to developing on offline payments and things like that. So I'd say watch out for African companies because they're coming to get you in a good way. Thank you.